to Power News. I'm Juhi Rajput. In today's episode of Power News, we're going to discuss energy efficiency and management, key driver for moving to a low carbon economy. And to discuss the same, we're joined by Mr. G. C. Dutta Roy, CEO, Dalki Energy Services. Mr. Saurabh Didi, Energy Economist, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Mr. Arun Sahai, Chairman, Builders Association of India. Mr. M. K. Singhi, E. D. Shri Cement. And Mr. Vijay Kunche, CEO of Real Energy. Good evening and welcome to Power News. Mr. Saurabh, National Mission on Enhanced Energy Efficiency is one out of eight missions planned under the National Action Plan on Climate Change. Bureau of Energy Efficiency is targeting to save around 5% of fossil fuel, which is consumed by designated consumer under PAD scheme. Is this figure achievable according to you? As we have discussed with industries, and uh, we are having data from last 10 years from Energy Conservation Awards also. So based on that, we analyze that this target is more or less achievable. Only pro few issues are there, like some industries are very energy efficient, they will, it will be difficult for them. Some are highly in inefficient, they can achieve even more than 5%. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is not a problem for achieving the target. And at the same time, we are giving a energy saving certificate to them. So that if somebody is not able to achieve their target, they can purchase energy saving certificates who have overachieved. Mm -hmm. So more or less we can achieve that target by that 5%. Even we can achieve more than 5%. Okay. Uh, Mr. Roy, every industrial entity has been given a target for specific energy usage on the basis of its products. How this targeted figure would be achieved so that it neither becomes over nor under ambitious? If you see it's a path scheme is only for currently 462 units, hmm. not the entire spectrum. Hmm. And each of these units is getting studied and to make it is worthwhile and at the same time uh, not daunting, the targets should be fixed based on historical benchmark. Hmm. Everybody can achieve a target and let me tell you, we would have done work in more than 100 industries in India, 5% is a very, very modest target. Mm -hmm. I always tell B that you have been very modest in target setting because we have never seen, wherever we have worked, the energy savings, least we have seen is one case 13%, but in most of the cases it is over 30%. Right, so at the initial stage it would be wise to have a modest target, I guess. Uh, Mr. Kunchi, I'd like, I'd like to ask you, what could be the major challenges related to PAD scheme, implementation of PAD scheme? Normally, an industry would always uh, try to focus on uh, production, basically, and they do not have enough money for the energy efficiency. Basically, this has to come from the implementation agencies like ESCO. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is, in India, ESCOs are too small and their balance sheets do not permit the bankers to give finance. So there should be an effort from the government side to see that uh, ESCO companies, ESCO industry becomes a priority lending sector for the bankers, so that fund will be available for implementing this uh, efficiency target. Mm -hmm. So then definitely this PAT scheme would be very successful. ESCO have already been graded by Crystal and they, uh, they have already started uh, providing services to the industry. How are banks going to finance the energy efficient projects of ESCO? Now for ESCO, as Mr. Kunche rightly said, that, uh, getting a loan from a financial institution is very difficult for ESCO because of their small balance sheet or number of other issues are there. So for what, that reason, Bureau of Energy Efficiency is making two funds. One is PRGF, that is Partial Risk Guarantee Fund. Another is Venture Capital Fund for Energy Efficiency. Mm -hmm. These two funds actually promote performance contracting business. Mm -hmm. Now how they will promote is that once they will go to a banker, they will ask for a loan and we will analyze that that project is itself is technically sound. If that is technically sound and there will be some due diligence, then we will say that PRGF actually, that fund will say that yes, we will support this project and we will share risk. We are only giving a risk guarantee. We are not giving money. In case there will be a default to some listed reasons, which are not in their hand or some other reason, then in that case that fund will give money to the banker, some percentage of money, say maximum to 50%. Mm -hmm. So that will be supported by this PRGF. Now this fund is, will not be continuous. It is to kickstart the market. Mm -hmm. 
so that market transformation will occur and this whole performance contracting business will be initially started energy efficiency financing platform aims to stimulate necessary funding for escos which will invest in enhancing energy efficiency and they'll be paid from the savings do you feel escos have an attractive business opportunity in the sector that there are several lending communities who will come in the first which will have practiced in some industries the working capital banker itself comes to lend because working capital banker has a lien on the revenue of revenue cash flow so energy efficiency energy bill which is being paid to the utility working bank has a control over it so they can come in the term lending companies can come in because of this guarantee if sri cement wants to invest 1000 crores in energy efficiency i don't think there will be any problem whatsoever and if such kind of guarantee comes in it only makes that deal sweeter if i talk of the cement industry almost 85 to 90% of cement industry is covered in this package scheme mm -hmm. region being that yes the, they all cross the threshold mm -hmm. limit as well cement industry itself wants that yes we should participate in this because they are able to look at that yes uh, this will also help us in energy efficiency as well as in uh, generation of profits and you know like whether it's a pet scheme or whether it's a esco scheme or not since last 4 5 years if you look at cement industries they have already reduced their energy bill by maybe 8 to 10% in terms of quantity i would say and once uh, pet scheme is also sweetening by giving the energy efficiency revision all this i think cement sector steel sector power sector the whole idea is they would go for it we'll take a short break here you keep watching power news you're watching Power News and today we're discussing energy efficiency and management key driver for moving to a low carbon economy. Uh, Mr. Saurabh, designated consumers who fail to achieve their target will have to compensate the failure by buying permits and if they fail to do either of the, these, they may have to pay penalty. How would these penalties be fixed? These penalties is actually like we gave some target in terms of turn of oil equivalent. Now, if they will not achieve the target of ton of oil equivalent, then whatever shortfall in terms of uh, ton of oil equivalent, they have to pay actual amount of money. What is the market value of that ton of oil equivalent? Mm -hmm. Say, if it is thirty thirty thousand rupees a ton of oil equivalent at that time, and he has not saved ten thousand ton of oil equivalent, so ten thousand into thirty thousand rupees plus ten lakh of penalty. That is the fixed penalty. So that's where it will be calculated. Mr. Yeah, regarding this uh, penalty, uh, I have a different kind of a view also. Uh, compliance from the industry for the penalty is very, very difficult. Uh, as on uh, date, uh, as per the past scheme, the state designated agencies, they were supposed to collect the penalty, okay. impose and collect the penalty. But however, that would be a very difficult task as I would see uh, based on the capabilities available and the capacity available in the uh, designated agency. So my suggestion would be that there should be some form of a carbon tax on the polluting industries who don't comply to this PAC scheme. Uh, like in the Sweden or in Britain or in Canada where it has been very successful, we can impose some kind of a carbon tax on the industry who are not complying to this scheme. So that would uh, give a minimum amount of fund to the government and government also can use this fund for the energy efficiency improvement in various sectors. We are saying that they should purchase energy saving certificate and yes. cost of energy saving certificate will be far lesser yes. than the penalty because it's a market based, market driven. So we are saying to purchase, if you are not able to comply, you purchase energy saving certificate, not pay penalty. But in case you fail to purchase energy saving certificate, then only you will go for penalty. We are purchasing so, so many type of uh, raw material. We are purchasing energy also. So if we are not able to perform, we have to buy energy saving certificate. Say so like in US and power sector, I think since last 22, 24 years, this sort of uh, scheme is working. And otherwise also nowadays, in maybe in last few years, in many countries such schemes are working. 
So I think, say like if I am uh, able to say about cement sector, cement sector has welcomed this scheme and nobody cheats that this, this would come as a penalty. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sai? Yeah, I agree. I agree with what my friend said. Imposition of penalty is not a solution. Like we have to encourage conservation and efficiency mm -hmm. system. And penalty, uh, we try we try to bring the inspector Raj, as the, as the friend said. And uh, we would like the system to be more transparent and promote conservation and efficiency through that. So maybe a tax could be a solution, but not the penalty. Mm -hmm. And that, that is what I believe. As the prices would be market driven, according to you, which are the major factors that are going to affect the price, Mr. Roy? If you see the history, uh, there are international experiences and we have a little experience right now of the REC, that Renewable Energy Certificate. And the international experience had been uh, going through a learning curve. Uh, there have been occasions when you have oversupply, there is no taker, so prices have crashed, there was no incentive then for industry to do further. And at another time it happened that you have demand and there is no supply and so so my guess is we have to go through that learning journey and let's see this and I'm glad that it is 462 because I would have been happier if it was 200 and 250 the reason is then the cost of learning and the time of learning is less and then you can take a quick corrective action my suggestion to be would be that make it attractive enough so that it should be making a, you know, in, in, in your report, it should not be a second decimal figure. Then nobody would be interested. So I think we'll have to work industry, be us, all of us have to work together to see how do we do it to remove the greed and the fear. Then it will work. Okay. Uh, I would sorry. like to add here, uh, as far as pricing is concerned, it, it, what we want is, it will be market-based. We discussed number of times these things, these are issues related with the pricing. So still we are in the process of identifying whether to keep floor price or not. Uh, top ceiling level prices always be like penalty, it won't go above that. So there won't be much of greed as such. As well. But what we want is that we can have a floor price so that it will not go to such a low price that nobody is ready to sell. With regard to the pricing of the e-certificate, what I would really feel is there should be definitely a floor price. Mm -hmm. uh, without that, what happens is the market will be uh, misused by the industry. And the certificate price, if it is too low, it is not attractive enough to do anything. So what I would really think is there should be a floor price. This uh, floor price should be almost equivalent to the cost of energy saving for that much amount of uh, oil equivalent. What I would say that still for implementation of this pet scheme and then buying or selling this effect that would come after two and a half years or so. And till that time nobody is aware that what would be the price. So the whole focus of the industry would be to comply with that as I have said earlier also that it's not energy efficiency is not just for complying with PET but energy efficiency is for reducing greenhouse gases improving its own image, reducing your energy cost, how all the limited consumers are coordinated, how uh, information are spread, how audit takes place and how the bank, institutions, venture fund help industry in promoting clean technologies. Well, it's time to take a short break here. You keep watching Power News.